Hello and welcome to another Cadence Tech video. Today we will be talking about the DSP 4.8. Uh, in this video we're going to do uh, just a general overview. Uh, I will have other, view, other videos uh, going in more depth on uh, controls or how to use uh, this in certain applications. First off I'd like to say that the, uh, the DSP 4.8 is designed as what I like to refer as the audio toolbox. I refer to it as the audio toolbox because basically the unit is a simplified uh, DSP and it simply has uh, crossover uh, values uh, that you can change on eight, all eight channels of output uh, along with some form of delay uh, that would be used uh, for signal delay. Plus also you have a PEQ uh, or parametric EQ uh, where you can adjust both level and also Q values uh, on that would be 16 channels on each individual output. All right, so the very first thing we will talk about here uh, is we're going to talk about the COM and input section. Uh, that would be this area here on the on the uh, the panel. This is, uh, of course, obviously this is uh, the GPU up at um, the GUI interface that we use for our um, the DSP. Uh, here at the top uh, left hand corner, you're going to see a red button. This is called the COM button. This is uh, you would push this, uh, and it would normally light up green. I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, this shows you whether you are communicating directly with the DSP or not directly with the DSP. Here we have our input section, uh, auto, SPIF, or digital, and analog inputs. Normally you just leave it in the auto mode, it'll automatically select on which input you have, but if you're using multiple inputs, then you would have to, you know, you would have to sit there and tell which one it's going to use. The next section here uh, will be the memory uh, section. Uh, now in this memory section we have two sections for it. One is the upper boxes. This is for local memory on your computer and the lower box is for local memory in the DSP itself. So let's say for instance you want to set up uh, presets uh, for customers or uh, say like you know a, uh, you've just got a four channel and a subwoofer you know combo pack you know that you're going to sell. You can go ahead and set up the basics, like say your crossovers, a high pass and low pass configurations, and your output sections. You get all this preset in, and then you just simply load it into the unit. Instead of you manually setting everything again, you just simply go and you hit open, and you select the file that you would do. Also, at the same time, this is really good for whenever you're doing a customer's cart, you can save their presets to your computer system and that way you have a backup. So, you know, if say for instance something catastrophic happens and they lose all the presets, uh, you have now a backup that you can upload uh, to the unit and uh, restore uh, the system as it was before so you don't have to go and, and redo it all. The lower section here is again, like I said, this is the local memory um, for the DSP itself. So I'll explain to this in a little bit. The next area here will be uh, the graphical uh, interface that shows us, you know, what is going on, uh, what is the crossover slope, or where the crossover is sitting at, uh, or what EQ settings you know you've changed or values. All this will show up uh, in the graph here at the top. The next box here uh, is going to be the master volume system. This is where uh, your main volume in, uh, you would you can either set it to zero, which would be unity, or you can do uh, plus uh, 10 on the output. Uh, and then you also have a master uh, uh, type of mute system. So if you just want to mute everything all at one shot, you can hit the, the one button here. The next box here uh, is our uh, output section. Uh, this is where we would to set up everything. Uh, as you can see here, we've got left, you know, one channel one left, channel two right, channel three left, and channel four right. Now those are the four inputs that you can select. Now we can also say that this is going to be one left and this one be one left. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to set them all that way. So you're, you're a, you have plenty of latitude in terms of, of changing or selecting what kind of inputs. Also, you can see here you have subwoofer outputs. We can uh, combine, you know, just the two channels that are input and get more gain output. That's one of the nice advantages of doing it for the for the subwoofers. You also have um, 
mute controls for each individual, all eight ad channels there, plus also level control for all eight channels. And you also have the ability to do a simple 180 degree flip and phase on all eight channels. Now the copy button here on the side is designed so that it makes it easy for you to start with one and copy it over to the next, copy over to the next, copy over to the next, and on and on and on. The next box here is our crossover section. Uh, this allows us to set up both high pass, band pass, and low pass. Um, this also allows us to go from 6 dB to 48 dB. So many different varia variations depending on locations of tweeters or mid-range or mid-bass drivers uh, help us uh, to deal with fundamental phase issues that are uh, associated with the location of the speaker in comparison to other speakers. So it's nice to have the ability to change this so we, we have a good phase, uh, we can deal with phasing issues uh, between the speakers themselves. Uh, the last one over here is going to be obviously the delay. Now this is signal delay. Uh, this is per channel, so wherever you're selected here, you know, the orange button on right there, uh, you will dictate what this delay is working on. So channel 1 here, if I change the delay there, I'm changing that delay. So very simple system for the delay. You can also go from milliseconds to centimeters, uh, or you can turn it on and off physically. The last section on the bottom here is the PEQ uh, section. This is the you know par uh, parametric EQ. This allows us to change uh, many values. We have 16 channels per channel, so all eight channels have 16 D uh, 16 bands to mess with. Um, each band can be changed to whatever configuration you want. You you can you can you don't have to start out with these numbers. You can start this to be 500, or you can do that one at six, or you can do this one at you know seven, or whatever you want to do. You can set up however you want to. If you want to try to get like a half octave or an octave, however you want to do your changes, you can do that. The second section here is the it, now that's going to be under the EQG section. Now, that just simply means that. The EQG just simply means so we're going to be changing level and what number we're working on. EQQ is actually the parametric section of it, and so that changes the Q value um, of the of each individual uh, channel. Uh, let me go ahead and turn this off. <clears throat> I'll give you a demonstration of what I mean by this. So let's say, for instance. <clears throat> We set our high pass. Uh, let's say channel one uh, is going to be our front speakers and stuff. We're going to go ahead and set that as a high pass. And we want to set that high pass at, say, 90, you know, 90 hertz. But I want to go ahead and do a 48 dB uh, type of crossover slope. Now, the first thing I do is I hit copy and I go to channel two. Now, what that did was that just now copied over from one channel to the other channel. And so we have identical. So let's say, for instance, we have four speakers in here. And but the rear speakers, I'm going to go ahead and set them also to high pass, but I'm going to set them at a higher rate. So let's say about 125 hertz instead. And also again, I'll set it at 48 dB for now. I may have to change that value. 24 might be a better choice, um, but that's something you have to do when you're listening to it. So again, I hit copy, paste over, and boom, there you go. Now I all my input, <coughs> the input here has been set is uh, input one, input two, input three, input four. But I can change that if I wanted, if I only had two inputs in, I could again put this as input one and input two. And then that way, you know, all four channels are copies of each other. So there, you know, no difference there. Now, if you do have a radio that has a uh, subwoofer output, okay, I find this very uh, useful. Uh, where I'll do the four channels like this, but on sevens and eight, I'll go ahead and put it on three and four. And what that does is that allows you to have independent subwoofer level control from the head unit itself. So now you can, your these two channels will always be independent from these channels over here, and in that way you still have subwoofer control. Uh, you can go ahead and set, you can set manually uh, however you want to on, this, on your uh, gain output. And the gain output is controlled via two different ways. Uh, anytime that you get the slider lit up where you see the bars lit up like this, uh, we can either do it via through the mouse up and down, we can either do it through the scrolling of the mouse up and down, or you can also use the arrow keys up and down. Uh, so however you wish to use, or however you want to control the slider, 
uh, is up to you. So anytime you click on a slider and the blue lines show up on the side, we can now change it however we want to do. <clears throat> and so here you can see I'm moving this one up and down, you know, you know, changing the crossover value. And 120. So now um, on the EQ section here, the what we would have is is let's say for instance, um, you know, I'm I'm here in the in the mid range area. Uh, let's say I want to start at 500 hertz. I can sit there and just manually go ahead and say 500 hertz. And as you can see, I can I can boost it or I can cut it. Uh, however, you know whatever's needed, you know for the output. Now, as you can see here, you see the slope on each side here, uh, and that ratio is configured by the Q value. And so here we're at a 2.7. Now, let's say for instance. I wanted to manually put this in and I wanted a Q of 9, okay? What a Q of 9 would be uh, is relatively equivalent to 1 16th, uh, you know, uh, our octave uh, slope value. So you, you get a very narrow band filter uh, here. The Now if I went down to let's say 0.5 uh, Q value, you can see that I have a very wide uh, ratio and that's roughly close to about two octaves so you're able to control two octaves you know right and left uh, from your uh, from your original starting point of 500 hertz and again you can just use this as you know up and down right here now one of the other advantages you can do is you can just go up to the screen grab onto the value and move it around however you need to do up and down you know, with what, you know, whatever's necessary. So if you're playing with your RTA and you're trying to figure out problems, you know, you can easily just grab this and just move it around, you know, and, and see what the effect is, the cause and the effect of what's happening when you move this around. So again, that's that's the basics. And so here, if you click on the EQQ, you know, uh, basically in a nutshell, <clears throat> you know, this allows you to change the Q value here, up and down. And EQG is going to be the actual... Uh, magnitude of the output you know uh, here plus also the value of whatever you want it at or if I again like I said if I move it here like this you can see that the value on the screen changes along with it so you can you know do with whatever you want to do you know, like grab another one over here you know and grab another one there yeah and you can see there's 16 um, you know on this channel so you can see they go all the way out here but I can put that I can bring that over here I can take these and group them all inside here and you know I can have all 16 bands within the the range that I'm playing right now and you know just just mess around here you know and, and do with whatever I want to do now once that's done and stuff we're gonna we're gonna look at the idea we need to save this so what we need to do is, is well first off I need to hit the com button So as you can see, the COM button comes up green. Uh, that indicates that we are now connected to the EQ itself. And as you see, that it brought up presets that were already there. Um, so, you know, again, like I said, I can I can just grab whatever I want to do, move it around, you know, change it, move this up here, you know, do whatever you want to do in terms of what you need to. So here, if I want to go ahead and save this, um, we hit the enter button. You have two buttons that now light up, memory and delete. So I can either delete you know uh you know what is in the current uh you know like in this case the number one file position uh now i want to go ahead and hit memory it's going to ask you this do you overwrite any memory that's on there already and you say yes and then it'll confirm back successfully save indicating that that has been now saved if you wish to um now save this um let's say for instance let's uh, save this as another um you know, some some sort of you know, this is my local computer, so I'm going to call it um, DSP 4.8. <clears throat> Hit save, and now that's uh, saved on my local computer. So if I open up the file, uh, you can see here I have multiples that I've already done. So like say for instance, if I want to bring up um, you know pre or something like that, see what that is. See it's changed the values, or I can go back to where we were the DSP 4.8 and now we're back to the original one so that's how the saving both on the local computer and the local memory is set now always remember just go ahead and hit the enter button to, to get out so that you can actually change what preset value you're going to be at so if you want two three four five six seven eight or nine ten you have ten ten values 
uh, for your presets. Um, one thing that I do have to say, anytime that you're going to get out of uh, the program, you're, you're done doing anything um, and you're saved everything all, ma make sure to hit the COM button so that it goes into red. The unit doesn't necessarily like it when you just simply shut the program down. Uh, it uh, doesn't make it freak out, but it just doesn't quite like it. So just go ahead and uh, make sure to always shut the COM button off uh, when you are finished. Um, anyway, that's it for now. I will give you more info um, in other videos explaining in detail you know, what, what we're doing.